Sweet Jesus Radio. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Sweet Jesus Radio. Coming to you from El Paso Brewing Company or El Paso Brewing Co. One <laughs> either or. <laughs> yeah, either or is fine. Definitely. Got another awesome guest in the house tonight. We have the head brewer. I want to welcome to the show Jason Baca. How are you doing? Not too bad, man. I uh, had a long day here kegging and everything, but um, at least we're relaxing with some beers right now. Hell so, yeah, hell so. yeah, man. Thanks for the beer. What, what's, what's this one called? Uh, this one is Wicked Felina. It's uh, IPA. Okay. Wicked Felina? Yeah, Wicked Felina. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So head brewer, that's your official title here? Uh, pretty much. I mean, I just handle most of the brewing process, uh, recipe development, all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, okay. So um, listeners, we're going to go into, well, obviously talk about the brewing process. We're going to talk about El Paso Brewing Company, uh, the history behind that, and hopefully we get into some, uh, some stories. I'll do a little recap. But again, oh, and just to say right off the bat, if you hear a little background noise, we're actually in the brewery, so you'll hear some of that background noise, so uh, I do apologize in advance, but we thought it'd be really cool to do the episode here just to change it up a little. So you know, thank you for bearing with us. Um, besides that, I want to thank just the listeners in general, anybody that's been listening and sharing and spreading the word. Big shout out to the homie Joanna for suggesting Jason. Okay, uh, they're, they're buddies, so, and uh, she's my friend, so you know. Two and two, two and two equals four, and we made it happen. So, and it works out because I love beer. Anybody that knows me knows I love beer. So we'll go ahead and jump into the episode, guys. Uh, real quick, I'll do a little recap, and then we'll jump into the actual interview. Um, what did I do in January? And I like talking about this stuff because I love comedy, I love podcasts, and things of that nature. I did make a little trip a couple weeks ago to Phoenix, Tempe specifically. You, been, you ever been out there, Jason? Uh, I've been to Phoenix driving through, but I've never actually stopped or really? anything like that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, in high school, we played a show in, when I was in a band, we played a show in, um, I forget what the little town is called, but it's just like farmland. Oh. Uh, but just right outside of Phoenix, right before you get to San and Diego. It, and it's farmland? And it's just farmland. Yuma or something like that? Yuma. That's oh, okay. the place. I yeah, got it right on, I got it on the first, yeah. <laughs> first guess. Yeah, I've heard of it. I, I'm assuming I've passed through it. I was yeah. there to go see one of my favorite comedians, man. Uh, stand-up comedian. I don't know if you're into that world at all. Yeah, stand-up but, uh, is pretty good. Uh, this guy by the name of Joey Diaz. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah, I've yeah. heard of Joey Diaz. He's, uh, he's, okay. he's fucking hilarious. Older Cuban yeah. guy. So. Yeah, so he was... Uh, he was performing man at the Tempe Improv. So again, big shout out and thank you to my buddy Joe. He's the one that treated me. You know, he bought me the ticket and we used his vehicle to get out there because it's both of ours, one of our favorite comedians. Also, we're big fans of his podcast. If you ever want to check it out, um, called the the Church of What's Happening Now. Reason I bring that up is just to give my homie a shout out. Also, just to talk about how fun it was. We had a blast. Uh, just had a few drinks beforehand. Um, we had a heckler there, you know, Joey Diaz shut him down yeah. really quick. He did not yeah. disappoint. He so. was hilarious, man. So anybody that knows Joey Diaz, you know, it's a lot of the same stuff you hear on his podcast. He basically delivered a lot of the, the same humor and jokes and, and stories. Um, besides that, again, big shout out to my homie Joe uh, for making that happen. And that was one of the things that, that happened last month. All kinds of stuff happening. Uh, we, got, we got Trump. We got a new president. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Right? The world's going to shit. <laughs> A lot of people got a lot of strong opinions on that. Yeah. I think on the, one of the last <laughs> December podcasts, I, I shared a few opinions on that. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, you, know what, you know what movie I saw last week? Barely. I think I'm the last person on the planet to watch this. Uh, Rogue One. I watched Rogue One with my girlfriend maybe maybe the second weekend it came out. Oh, yeah? But it, it was pretty interesting. It's pretty dope. What would you think? <laughs> she fell asleep during oh, the movie. Goodness. But um, I'm a big fan of Star Wars. You're so a Star Wars head. It yeah. was nice to see that it, they kind of brought it back to episode six, seven, and eight. So. Well, yeah, it made sense. I don't care if I give spoiler alerts, man. Yeah. It's already been out for a while, but it was cool because they were actually <laughs> able to explain. Because one of the things yeah, that people criticize shit. about episode, what is it, four? Yeah. Uh, is that how the heck, or how the heck did, <laughs> how can the Death Star have this huge flaw in it? You know yeah. what I mean? So they were able to write that in there and explain. You know why there was a such yeah a they connected a lot of the weakness. story backgrounds yeah. and shit so so that 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 was pretty cool yeah. because also one of my complaints about episodes one two and three is that a lot of it doesn't really connect yeah. <laughs> some of the stuff that they say in four five and six doesn't really connect properly with yeah. one two and three but you know 
this I is think like, they wrote it that way or some shit, but yeah. Who knows? And, and so. I, I had totally forgot about it, but the one, the ones that pointed it out was uh, South Park. Man, there's that episode of South Park where they kind of make fun <laughs> of it. Uh, but I guess yeah. Rogue One's like 3.5 or something like that, well, right? South, South Park is always on everybody's ass. Yeah. yeah. Fucking three days later, they're open, yeah. making a new episode. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be right. hey, as long as it's as long as it's good, uh, it's a good show. So yeah. it's hilarious. So. so okay, cool. So that's pretty much what I did, man. And then of course we got. Uh, do you watch football? Nah, I'm not a big At sports all? fan. Well, um, I'm a Cowboys fan, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. <So laughs> the, the boys lost. Uh, you know, we had a first round bye. I, I say we like if I'm part owner and <laughs> shit. Uh, and then, yeah, man, you know, they were kicking our ass uh, first half, but we, we, we fought back. We made it interesting. We had the, the Packers fans, uh, you know, shitting their pants a little bit. And, but, you know, freaking, what's his name? Aaron Rodgers had to come back and do his thing like he's known to do. And they ended up winning. They deserve it. But, you know, again, it's, cow- it's, it's tough being a Cowboys fan, man. Yeah, I mean, they're always <laughs> losing. <so. laughs> they lose often. My Even- dad is a Steelers fan, so he's always like, but they're never winning either. So Yeah, <laughs> they, 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 they did their thing a little bit this year, but then eventually lost. Yeah. Uh, or have they lost already? Yeah, because yeah, we're in the Super Bowl already. Um, yeah, because once the Cowboys lose, I lose interest. So I don't <laughs> even know what's going on anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, see, even even you uh, that doesn't even watch it, you you yeah. already know that the Cowboys lose a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean they have a bunch of memes now, so memes yeah, the, the memes keep you yeah, yeah. the memes so, keep you informed, huh? Definitely. And then, uh, <laughs> but you know what's cool is that we had a bunch of rookies, bro, and we still made it to yeah. the playoffs. So. that's what's that's what's pretty cool is knowing that these people never never been in yeah. this kind of industry. We're not well, that industry. The quarterback, but just, especially, that's such a it's a lot of pressure, man. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm gonna get this move just a little bit closer to you. All right, cool. Yeah, no worries. Um, so you know, props to them. Give credit where credit is due, haters. Uh, that's pretty much it for January. We are in February. It feels like. Do you think January flew by or did it take? January long? fucking flew by. I'm like, I'm filling out all the paperwork for last month, and then this month just kind of got okay. away from me. Because so. I've had some people <laughs> say that it that it uh, dragged, and I'm like, if anybody says any month or any week drags, yeah. it's because you're not doing shit. <laughs> like you're probably don't have a lot going when you're on. Super in your busy, life. When you're you don't busy, even fucking notice. Right? Yeah. When you're busy, <laughs> time flies like a motherfucker. Like you wish yeah. you had more hours in the day. Definitely, man. When you ain't crazy. doing shit. No disrespect to anybody. I'm just saying. When you ain't doing shit, we ain't doing much. Uh, it, everything lags and shit. Yeah. And it drags. So. I mean, here most days are like eight, ten hours. Brew days are like eighteen hours. So. Holy shit. Some days I don't even remember what fucking day it is. Yeah, so. man. They just kind of uh, blend into each other, huh? Yeah. So. so yeah, we're definitely gonna talk about the whole process, the brewing process, and man, it's, it's a it's a nice spot. So guys, you know, we'll talk about it more later, but you know, make make a trip down here. It's it's a beautiful place. I'm in the back. What are these things called again? The tanks or something? Or uh, all these are my fermenters. So fermenters, all right. They're all 10 barrels. A barrel is about 31 gallons. So all we right. make 10 of those, which is 310 gallons at a time. All right, so all right, all right. It's about 50 or 60 kegs. So, <laughs> so you're making some. You're going to make some of these uh, alcoholics mouthwater, man. Yeah. And definitely. connoisseurs as well. <laughs> I should just say connoisseurs, huh? Okay, cool. So let's talk. Let's get into your background a little bit, man. Uh, just because, yeah, we're mostly going to talk about brewing in the bar, but I also, me personally, I like to talk about yeah. people's kind of backstories and stuff like that. So if you can kind of go into just, yeah, just kind of talk about where you grew up and, you know, maybe your childhood a little bit, teenage years, high school, stuff like that. Just some, maybe some little fun facts and things like that, man, yeah. just to kind of get things started. Well, I'm a military brat. I mean, um, my dad was in the military most of my life, so we moved around a lot. All right. um, I've spent time in North Carolina and Germany. Uh, my parents actually met in Germany. My mom's a German. Uh, she's she's a really nice lady. Hmm. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I spent most of my childhood in North Carolina and Germany, living with over there, uh, just in the military. Um, did a bunch of different kinds of schools and things like that over there. Uh, and then my my parents, after like six years of living in Germany, we got transferred to Fort Hood, which is kind of near Austin. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yep. Um, but for the most part, I spent most of my teenage years in Fort Hood, and then um, my brother died when we were like, when I was like 14. Oh man! And after that, we kind of uh, decided to move uh, closer to family, which is where El Paso oh, is. Okay. My dad's actually originally born in Juarez, and oh wow, his family grew up here, and this is kind of where he grew up and shit like that. So, nice. uh, but for the most part, I've been living in El Paso now for almost. 10 years. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I was born here, and then we, after I was born, we kind of hightailed it to North okay. Carolina, and yeah. then I grew up in North Carolina and Germany, and um, 
around 12 or 13 is when we moved to Fort Hood and then um, for the most part I'm, I'm here in El Paso but um, I don't really have any schooling or anything like that um, I've been kind of home brewing that's how I kind of got involved nice. in this in this business uh, I actually started working at a home brewing shop on the east side oh. um, where they just if you want to make your own beer that's yeah. the shop to go to so you get oh, all your okay. equipment your okay. ingredients all that kind of shit um, and I got introduced to the, the business owner here uh, by a friend of mine, Justin Gibson. He's actually a, a distributor for LNF, so he's oh, cool. in the beer industry too. But oh, yeah. it's kind of a small world because when you get involved in these kind of things, it means that you're you're probably doing something right. But at the same time, if people don't like your beer, you might be doing something wrong. Damn. So, <laughs> so. so you got to be real careful, huh? But it's a, it's a small world just because, I mean, we, uh, we were at Rubik's for like a... Um, I think it was a karaoke party, uh-huh. and he was fucking doing karaoke, and then I ran into him, and he's just like, do you want a brewer's job? And, oh, wow. Um, ended up just getting the job here after getting introduced to one of the owners and kind of uh, went downhill from there. So, so. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's not a great way to, to describe it, downhill from there. <laughs> I mean, it's not really downhill. <laughs> no, we're, no. we're definitely... Uh, we're definitely trying to uphill. get a lot of people here and shit, but <laughs> it went uphill from there, huh? Um, <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the processes and procedures here are kind of just long days and yeah, a lot of work. So did you say you were in a band earlier? Uh, yeah, I used to be in a band in high school. Was um, it here in El Paso? Yeah, here in El Paso. What it was actually uh, Maybe I know them. Feed Walrus Defeat. Hmm. Um, we were kind of a grind band, uh, so hardcore music stuff like that, um, mosh pit shit. Nice, <laughs> right, 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 shit. But um, for the most part, uh, I only did that for about a year. I played a show in Tijuana actually Holy one time, shit. and that was actually pretty crazy. What we, happened uh, out there? We went to Yuma, played a show there, and then ended up staying at some house. The house barely had any electricity. They were literally the other band, and I guess they were living there or renting the house or some shit. <laughs> but they had a fucking generator in the middle of the house, Holy shit. and no fucking power, dirty ass everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, fucking hilarious and then after that we went to Tijuana uh, played a show in this crazy ass theater that had no fucking roof I don't know uh, if it had been blown off or <laughs> if they didn't repair that shit or something but no fucking roof at all um, and we played in the lobby which was actually a, a sealed room it had a roof and walls and everything like that but then you walk through the door and <laughs> you go through this theater and there's no fucking no roof fucking at all roof. So you get to do some stargazing huh Stargazing, all Who's that kind of shit. these shows, man? Um, <laughs> I'm not even sure. That was when I was 17, so... Yeah, young buck, huh? I'm 26 now. Damn. Um, so it was yeah. a while back. Definitely cool, been a cool, while cool. back. What, uh, what venues did you play here locally? Uh, I used to play at Chicks when it used mm, to be okay. a band. Uh, Wayside Cafe in front of Hank's. Mm, um, did some high school shows here and there when they did, like, Battle of the Bands or little shindigs here and there. Uh, I did Coronado, Urban... Um, a couple things like that. I think we were talking about chicks in my last uh, episode. Yeah. I think it was chicks. Um, my buddy Luciana, she runs the Meditation Studio. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Yeah, I was actually listening to that one last week. Okay, so. yeah. She mentioned chicks. I think she used to work there or something along those lines. Well, she's a new friend of mine. So, I, you know, I found out about it through the yeah. podcast about chicks. But, yeah, I don't think I ever went when it was open, but... They used yeah. to do a lot of good shows there, and then oh, yeah. I don't know what the fuck happened to it, but it, it disappeared or <laughs> yeah. something. So, so. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's, it's hard running a business, man. It's hard yeah. No matter Definitely. how what business it is or how good it is, it's, it's hard keeping things open. Yeah. Um, great, man. So let's talk about, okay, so that's your background. And so you mostly grew up on what side of town? Uh, I grew up in the Northeast, so. Okay. Um, probably senior year I moved to the east side because my parents bought a house but I grew up mostly in the northeast all right all right, all right. and um, around Parkland High School that's where I actually graduated from high school nice. so. all right um, a lot of well not really anything but uh, urban Parkland all that kind of community and then we moved to the east side and I knew a lot of people from Hanks and uh, Montwood and oh, Eastwood yeah. and shit like that so cool, cool. So you're um, relatively young, so around what age or what, around what time did you start getting inspired or getting kind of motivated to do getting into brewing or did somebody kind of inspire you or kind of get you into it or did you kind of read up on it or just stumble upon it on online or can you tell us the story behind that? Yeah, um, for the most part I've only been brewing for about three years but um, 
most of what I've wanted to brew is just basically I drank a lot of craft beer nice. and I realized that if you brewed the beer yourself you could actually get a lot more variety of beer nice. so I've always been the type of person that I've enjoyed kind of you know making stuff cooking oh, okay all that kind of things just working with your hands your hands on and uh, a lot of brewing is fucking hands on for sure uh, but I've only been brewing about three years and getting into this commercial environment from being a home brewer and brewing at home and stuff like that it's kind of crazy because a lot of the mistakes that you would make on home brewing it's a lot easier to fix than when you make mistakes on mm. this scale so yeah um but a lot of what brewing is is just figuring out how to get through the day i mean it's just <laughs> what's going to happen today what are you going to do how yeah. are you going to fix that yeah. so um All the different scenarios but it's definitely been uh quite a quite a development of mine because i've only been brewing like i said three years and Going from home brewing to making 310 gallons at once is... That's what I was about to say. I mean, that's quite the that's jump. That's insane, yeah. So, you know, it's, <laughs> I mean, obviously there's similarities, but that's yeah, but just volume-wise, I mean... Definitely. That's a big difference. And again, uh, uh, a mistake could be... It's obviously a lot more costly, a lot more consequences involved. Yeah. Uh, and customers and things of that nature. So you have to be on point. And also, yeah. I guess, have your plan You got to make sure what comes C. out of that tank is just... It's pristine. It's on point, so. right? <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. So let me see here. So can we talk about... Can you give us, do you know the story behind the actual bar? Yeah, I mean, I've been involved since the beginning. Okay. Probably, it's been about a year and a month. So I live pretty say. close by, and I've been watching it, the sign yeah. come up little by little, and yeah. But they kind of were going for, I guess, uh, people are saying industrial chic, oh, wow. which is kind of, you know, just the building is kind of a warehouse. And I've heard pinata factory, um, office <laughs> building, and all kinds of pinata stuff that factory. it used to be before, oh, but okay. I'm not really sure what the business was before. Um, but the only thing that I didn't see go in was the floor drains. So we've got floor mm. drains to basically, I can make a mess anywhere and just kind of squeegee it to the drain. Nice. Um, but the whole building took about a year to make. We've had um, a lot of construction projects that are going on. Um, we had to upgrade the electricity here because we're just kind of pushing out way too much electricity in this wow. room. Okay. Uh, just a three phase. Uh, if anybody knows knows what that is, <laughs> I'm sure somebody does out there. Um, but for the most part, with uh, with the building. Um, a lot of what we had were just problems with the city and getting permits because oh. uh, we're basically the third brewery in El Paso. So yeah, a lot of red um, tape and whatnot. A lot of red tape and all that kind of stuff. But it's been a journey, and for the most part, it's been a really good one. I mean, we're just trying to make great beer for the city. So oh, yeah, we're sure. definitely a thirsty city, that's for sure. Hey, man, I'm a shit. The more breweries, the better, you know what I mean? I'm a beer guy, that's for sure. Yeah. And I like it. You know, like, I'm almost like the... Uh, what did I say? The the wheat type of beers, you know what I mean, or the Belgian ales and whatnot. But I've been getting into the IPAs. It was a kind of an acquired taste for me, man. The IPAs, because yeah. uh, you know some of the stronger ones are kind of bitter. Yeah, uh, I mean, people keep buying them for me for you know want a beer, sure, but they don't let me pick. <laughs> they always tell me IPA. So through that process, I started liking them more and more. Yeah, I mean, it's a developed taste. Some beers are a little bit too bitter, but for our IPA, we like to be a little bit balanced. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that's good. I ferment it with a different yeast than what's normal. Most people are fermenting with what like a uh, like an American ale strain, like California ale or American ale, uh, but we ferment ours with a saison strain. So it's a little bit a little bit funkier. Hmm. Um, but you get a little bit more of that hop character, yeah. uh, so much more um, that we're getting like citrus and some of the nicer flavors from hops like passion fruit and it tastes awesome and man. fruit and stuff you like can, that. You can, yeah, I can, I can definitely taste the citrusy, yeah. citrusiness of it. Oh yeah, okay. So let's talk about and then as far as the uh, is it is it cool to talk about like the owners I guess or kind of like yeah. how whose idea it was and kind of the history of it. Yeah, I mean for the, the origin most part, story. there's actually five owners. Okay. But um, Carlos Guzman, he's an owner, and uh, his idea was mo I think it's mostly his idea because a lot of the other owners aren't really uh, aren't really beer minded people. Okay. Um, but for the most part, they are in the investment kind of let, let's you okay. know that side of it put into the city and stuff like that. So. Um, but Carlos Guzman, he's had the idea to open a brewery for I don't know how long. Uh, okay. He talks a lot about that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. um, and he's a really good guy. Um, and most of what I could actually contribute to being at the position that I am is to him. So oh, yeah. for the most part with this, we've been, uh, we've been experimenting maybe for the first six months. Me and him were making pilot batches and uh, trying to get our flavor profiles down and trying to make sure that what we were actually going to release to the city was going to be something that was worth it. Um, and then through that process was kind of where, you know, the rest of our beers developed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're definitely in more of a development stage right now just because we are trying to figure out 
uh, what's going to sell, what's going to make it in this market. And right now we do have the plan to at least release about seven beers. Um, and through that mindset, um, a lot of the owners have their own kind of contribution to the business. I mean, they're all kind of involved in different ways. But um, for the most part, me and uh, the front of house manager, which is Reina Rivera, she's, uh, she's organizing all the events and uh, trying to get people here. And most of the construction projects and stuff like that were just figuring out uh, what we needed, what, what we needed to get. Um, we've got a glycol cooling system on the fermenters that basically keeps all of our fermenters at the perfect temperature during fermentation so that we can track and record things and make sure that we're consistently releasing that beer. Oh, yeah. um, and just trying to be, you know, a little bit... So it's the real deal here. Yeah. So no, no detail was spared. All right. Yeah. Can you talk about that process, man? I know I asked you earlier, you know, just kind of the brewing process. I know you, you said maybe you've had some, some stories that kind of... Uh, <laughs> You know some stuff that happened back here and things like that yeah uh, but yeah just go into the process man if you want to talk about different recipes things like that because me personally obviously i'm not a brewer and the average listener might be a connoisseur as far as consumption wise but we're not brewers so yeah you know i'm i'm curious so just the different ways of making beer and what, what goes into it all the different steps and like i told you before man just you know just let loose man because so, i, I want to know <laughs> yeah i mean with brewing it it's always trying to figure out what's going to go wrong that day uh, we made this Saison and it's in tank number two, um, but I broke a pump when I first got here, oh, shit. Um, and then from there everything just kind of went downhill because we're down <laughs> one pump, and Damn. normally for the brewing process we're using two. Mm. Um, I've had people get burned really bad where they're not paying attention to you know what's what kind of thing to take off or where they're going to, um, but we've had a lot of little issues where um, it's kind of crazy in this room because if you're not paying attention to where you're going or what's coming out of what, um, things could definitely go uh, pretty wrong for the yeah. most part. Uh, most of our issues here at, in, in, the, in the actual brewery have been with carbonation uh, just because I'm not really in the commercial mindset. I've never really worked for a commercial brewery. This is my okay. first gig. Yeah. Uh, so it's been kind of a trial by fire figuring out you know, what's actually going on, uh, what mistake not to make, how to you know, come back from that mistake. All and. Right just move forward every, every day so um, a lot of our beers they're gonna basically I mean they are good beers but at for the most part we are we are kind of in the development stage so what we have right now may not be what we have six months down the road all right, so, all right. um, it's just figuring out where we want to go and how to get there that's that's really all there is for this brewery well the beer um, I just had was awesome man uh, okay so kind of take us I guess maybe step by step from step by step just I guess from step one to whatever however deep you want to get man but you know just the whole process man well i mean step one is always the mash so when uh, you first make a beer you're basically throwing a bunch of grain and water together at a specific temperature right. and uh what we call it is saturation but what it really is is just basically converting starch to sugar so that way we get, have food for our yeast to make mm. uh, alcohol with and basically all you're really doing is just taking a bunch of starch from the grain converting it to sugar and then taking that liquid sugar boiling it adding hops to it, uh, cooling it down so that way your yeast uh, can actually ferment it. Uh, but for the most part, um, the brewing process is a little bit technical, but it's actually really simple to make beer. Okay. Uh, I start off the day and we uh, collect about 60 to 75 gallons of water. We heat it between 150 and 155, uh, depending on the recipe. And then from there, we basically uh, sparge the grain, which is basically rinsing all the sugar out of the grain. Uh, we collect between 85 and 90 gallons per boil. Mm. Uh, I make four batches a day, so I actually um, have a really intense day where I'm doing multiple mashes, multiple boils to get to 310 gallons. Um, and a lot of people in this industry may not understand what that means, but all it all it really means is that we're just we're just busting our ass to make yeah. beer. So. <laughs> So, how do you get the different flavors, man? Uh, you know, how does that work? Well, a lot of the flavor contributions are depending like, on what your mash temperature may okay. be. So if you mash at a lower temperature, you'll get a more fermentable wort. Uh, if you mash at a higher temperature, you'll get a less fermentable wort. Uh, and wort is just basically a term brewers use for sugary liquid. Okay. How do you spell um, that? W-O-R-T. Okay, just like, okay. And, um... 
most of the flavor compounds come from the wort itself, but then when you add hops, and depending on what yeast strain you may use, you can get either a fruitier beer or a less, you know, less flavor profile from the actual yeast and more flavor contribution from the malts and hops. Or maybe you'll get more flavor contribution from the yeast itself, like with, uh, like with a wit beer or a saison or something like that. Um, but it really depends on what your ingredients are, first off, to, you know, depend on what you're going to make. So. Sure, all right, all right, sure. And like, and as far as the, uh, and like you said earlier, with the citrus and stuff like that, how does that come into play with the fruit, the fruit flavored, um, the more you know, stronger uh, fruit flavored uh, beers, for example? Well, with I mean, the do you IPA, really just put that in directly, or what? What part of the process does that come into play? Uh, most of the process comes into play during the boil. So with our IPA. Uh, we're using Columbus hops, Citra hops, and Galaxy hops. And all three of those hops have a really citrusy, uh, dank kind of profile. Uh, almost reminiscent of like marijuana or some shit like that, Damn. if you actually get down to it. Because they are, they are relatives. Uh, right, but right. for the most part, with the IPA, uh, a lot of that flavor contribution comes from those hops. So uh, we're doing really citrusy hops. And then also with the yeast that it's fermented with, the, the yeast is also producing kind of a citrusy character. Mm -hmm. uh, during fermentation so it's kind of accentuating those flavors and just making them come out a little bit more uh, but with galaxy that's a that's going to be an australian variety of hop and with most of those hops that are from the southern hemisphere you get a lot of lemon lime yeah peach and all right kind of citrusy flavors from it so i think those are the ones i like more man yeah have you had are any of the employees here uh trying to do a little too many too much uh taste testing man behind so, your back no i don't think so <laughs> Um, I get nah, to I'm taste. Your mouth. I get to taste almost every day, but that's because I'm trying to figure out what's going on during the beer. And yeah. we've only had to dump one batch thus far, um, and we've we're probably on our tenth or eleventh batch. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, but out of the eleven batches, we've dumped one, and it was more because of the flavor contribution from the yeast we were using wasn't really something we wanted to serve. So oh, okay, okay. Um, now, do you know? Off the top of your head, or I don't know if you have them all memorized, but I guess if you can talk about some of the actual specific flavors, like the actual name of them, if you can kind of go down to maybe a short list or, or as, as deep as you want to go, yeah. and then kind of maybe describe each one, just so, because so, I want the listeners to really get a real clear picture in their heads, man. Uh, that way they know what, they're, you know, what, what to expect. Yeah, well, with the beers that we have, I, I remember the marketer names okay. very not, not so well, because um, mostly when I'm making the beer, I'm just going for style. Uh, but right now we have an IPA, we have a pale ale. Uh, the IPA is Wicked Felina, the pale ale is our Pachuco pale ale. Oh, shit. Uh, but most of the names that we're going for the beers here are locally related. So okay. there's, there's some kind of you know, name behind the background of the city as well, because we're El Paso Brewing Company. Uh, we're trying to make sure that... Do you have you the know, Devil's Triangle Lager? No, we don't have that <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have uh, our, our, bla our black lager right now. It's called Thunderbird. Um, oh, but I think that's Coronado or somewhere oh, cool. in that area. All so right. for the most part, a lot of our, our beer names do come from the city. Nice. Um, but not, not that intense. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scary place yeah, just, sometimes. Just joking. So. Man. Just kidding. I don't, I don't, listeners, I don't, think, uh, I don't think Jason's heard the show before. He doesn't know how much I joke around. So. <laughs> But uh, cool, man. Hell yeah. And what, what other kind of things, uh, If I don't know if you know, because I know you're more the, the, the brewer on the brewing aspect, but as far as the bar, what kind of ambience or you know, things of that nature, what, what are you going for? So I know you told me earlier there's a band coming in today, things like that. I mean, I didn't know you guys played music here. I think that's awesome. Yeah. You know, because I mean, it's, always, it's all about the live music. So obviously you have bands. Anything else going on here that the people should know about? Um, well, we are trying to do art markets on Sunday. I don't know how long that's going to last, but that's a concept we're kind of trying to bring here, too. Um, so this Sunday, there's an art market, and then I think the next two Sundays in a row, there's an art market. Oh, yeah. um, so depending on if that works or not, we may actually you know, keep doing it. Um, but for the most part, tonight, it's a German rockabilly band. I think it's Booze Bombs or something like that. Those lines. They're from here? Uh, I think they're and actually they're from through. Germany, oh, but okay. they may be passing through. They may be from here, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that end. Raina takes care of all the cool. all the planning and shows and that kind of I aspect. I think I have her on Facebook. What's her last name? Uh, Rivera. Yeah, I think I have her on Facebook. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I think the kids want to know when the, the EDM night is, man. So. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. So you have touring bands. That's pretty cool. Yeah, well... Um, I know most of the owners, they're, they're a little bit of the older crowd. 
Okay. And for the most part, um, they do want to do a little bit more in regards to like jazz shows nice. and food and kind of trying to do events here locally. Uh, but what we're trying to be mostly involved in is the community. So if there's if there's any shows or bands that are interested in playing here, uh, we're always welcome to you know book Who and should all they that holler kind of stuff. At? Uh, they should holler at Reina. Okay. Uh, or email us directly on the, f- or oh. not email us, but yeah. Facebook us, okay. or something like that. Messenger. But for the most part, we are we are trying to be involved in this community as much as possible. So hell yeah, hell yeah. anything that's going on, we we take interest in. I'll definitely sure. try to shoot some people y'all's way. Cool. Okay. So let me see here. What else can we talk about? Kind of kind of get into some of these stories, man. I mean, who who got burned? <laughs> <laughs> I get burned all the time. Are you serious? Uh, but mostly whenever I, people that don't know, I mean, it's kind of like you're not really thinking. I'm not really thinking that there's heat involved in this process, but I guess there yeah, is, right? There is for sure. I mean, we're boiling uh, on the system behind me. I know you can't see it on the podcast, but yeah. <laughs> on the it. system behind me, we have uh, I think they're 220,000 BTU burners, so they're they oh, get okay. pretty hot. All right. And uh, if we were sitting here when we were brewing, you can actually feel the heat off of it. Damn. All right, it's all right. uh, it's pretty intense. But we're boiling liquid for about 60 to 90 minutes, depending on the recipe, and then cooling it down so that we can pitch our yeast. So during that 60 or 90 minute boil, uh, we're adding hops and different flavoring additions to kind of get the flavor profile of the beer correct. And then we, uh, there's a heat exchanger that we use to basically uh, cool down the beer to around 65 to 70 degrees. Because uh, yeast is a living organism. They don't want to, I mean, if you add them to hot liquid, they're just going to die. Oh, okay. Uh, so for the most part, what we're trying to do is make sure that when it goes into the fermenter, it's it's at a good, suitable environment for the yeast. That way they create alcohol and uh, the good stuff that we're we're interested in. So Why uh, why downtown? Why, why this location? Is there well, a specific reason? We're right across the street from City 1 or City 3, something like that. Uh, but they actually call us City Four over here, so oh, <laughs> they're they're always coming down. But most of the reason is because next door you get all your permits and everything for the oh, city. Okay. Oh, that's right. So I've been here before. Yeah. If you um, one stop shop is that what it's called? Yeah, one stop yeah. shop. So we're set up right there, and a lot of contractors, a lot of people trying to do something in the city cool. are coming there. So we figured it's the best spot. There's some so, traffic here, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, this street is considered, I guess, an old highway, mm, Texas Street. Okay. So. I've never heard that, but yeah, there's definitely some traffic here. Yeah, there's a nice lawyer's office right here across the street. Yeah, a lot you get of in trouble here. A lot of different <laughs> stuff. Yeah, uh, cool. Okay, so any any plans to open up a second location, anything like that, or just kind of taking it, playing it by ear? Uh, just playing it by ear. For the most part, I don't really pay attention to any of that kind of stuff. Most of what I focus on is just brewing. Brewing. That's really Stick it. Stick to your area of expertise. All yeah. Right, right, right. Everybody else kind of handles the. So where, where exactly? Just for the listeners, what's the address here? What's a good cross street? Just so they get an idea, kind of like a, a mental picture. We're on 810 Texas Suite B, um, and what the cross street, street would be Virginia? Cotton in Texas. So if you if you exit Cotton, you just take a right on Texas, and we're. But then, what street is this? Is this Saint Vrain or Virginia? One of these streets? Uh, Saint Vrain is over here, where okay. the. I guess it's the blood, the blood place. Yeah. Okay. And I forget, I keep forgetting what this one is. So Saint Brain's a good one. Okay. Yeah. Saint Brain in Texas. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, all right. Shit. Any of the uh, any other details that you think the listeners should know about the place or about the brewing process, anything like that about yourself? So, yeah. I mean, for the most part, with our brewery, we're just we're um, we're kind of relatively new, of course. Uh, but we are making, you know, a lot of great beer, hopefully, in, in the future. And right now we are focusing on trying to basically put our brand, you know, out right. there. Um, and at the most, for the most part with everything, um, I mean, with the brewery, anything can go wrong. Uh, I've had two pumps break this week where you have to actually get down and one day you're a plumber, the next day you're an electrician. <laughs> um, I've got a bunch of control panels and electrical stuff that kind of... You need to make sure that it's working right. Um, fermentation, you need to track and make sure temperatures are going okay every day. Uh, making sure that you're not building up too much pressure in your fermenter. Um, a lot of crazy things, I mean, uh, in the brewery, but. Okay, and then uh, let's see here. Me personally, I mean, I'm gonna vouch for it. I'm gonna promote the hell out of it because I, I love it already. Uh, but can you tell the listeners why, why they should come here? Um, I mean, we're just kind of trying to be a little bit a little bit more, I guess, towards the sense of casual, I suppose. Uh, we do have kind of 
a lot of events going on and things like that, but we're doing free shows. We're trying to make sure that, you know, this can p- probably be somewhere you like to go. So yeah. uh, for the most part, there's a concept out there. I forget what it's called, but it's kind of like um, where you have your work, you have your home, uh, your place that you can relax and, you know, the place that you enjoy going. And we're hoping that this is the place that people enjoy coming and relaxing and even though you have a home and you have work, yeah. you can always come here and have a beer and yeah. just kind of talk to some somebody next to you at the bar. Or, you know, ideas kind of evolve here. So, what are the uh, what are the hours here? Uh, we're currently closed Monday and Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I believe we're open two to twelve. Uh, Saturday, I believe we're open till one, and then Sunday we're open from four to ten. Okay. So, how come breweries close early, man? Um, well, for is the it most a law part, or something? it's not really a law. It's just uh, I've been to some other ones, and um, yeah. I guess I get there like uh, eleven fifty nine, expecting that it's going to so, be up until two. Yeah, so we're closing. I'm like, oh. I think it really depends on your licensing, but oh, okay. for the most part, it's also if people are drinking past one, sometimes a lot of bad can happen oh, from okay. that too. So, so you're trying to shy yeah. away from that and avoid that yeah, that crowd. We are making beer, but we also want to be drinking responsibly and, and making sure that yeah. you know everybody's getting home safe. That way, so. you don't have to get the services of the lawyers across the street. Yeah, huh? definitely. So. <laughs> cool, man. All right, cool, man. I think we got a good amount of information so far, man. We got a. Uh, and we've recorded a pretty good amount of time here. Let me just go ahead and thank you, man. Unless there's anything else you want to say, let me thank you for, again, letting me do it here, you know, in the brewery. That's a, a new for me. So that's awesome. It's a first. Uh, thanks for just even accepting uh, the invite and doing the show. It's a shout out to Joanna for yeah. suggesting it once again. Um, can you just let the, if you know all, if you know all of the different outlets, can you let the listeners know where they can find you as far as social media wise? You yourself, if you want to put that out there, and also just the the actual El Paso Brewing Company pages and whatnot. Well, we're all, El, El Paso Brewing dot com uh, is our website, okay. and then we're on Facebook as well as Instagram. Uh, but for the most part, I'm not too handy with show, social media. Our front of house manager handles most of that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, but you can find us at 810 Texas Avenue as well all if right. you want to come down and have a beer um, any day, Wednesday through Sunday. All right. Um, all right. And what happened to your Facebook, man? So, <laughs> for the most part, I just kind of, I kind of. Um, I added you like a couple of days later. You're gone. I thought it was me. I thought so, maybe you, uh, Jesus is trying to get away from Jesus and shit. Yeah, I just kind of, I, I don't have enough time to be. Just juggle all of these. Yeah. You're you're actually doing something productive. Yeah. Instead of being nosy like me on on Facebook. So, cool, man. All right, shit. Well, do you want to give any shout outs or any thank yous like that before we wrap up? No, I mean for the most part, uh, I think we covered everything. Um, but. Regarding our beers right now, we did release our dark lager right okay. now, uh, which is um, probably our fifth beer available. Um, and then next week or two weeks from now, we're releasing uh, another beer. It's a Belgian Dubel. Nice. Um, that one is going to be called Mammoth Rock uh, after the formation on our mountains, the oh, Franklin nice. Mountains. Oh, yeah. And then I made a rice saison that will probably be ready in about four to six weeks. So. Nice. Oh, um, yeah, hell yeah. Shit, that sounds interesting, man. I'll yeah. be back. I will definitely be back. Cool. So I'm going to give my social media, my shout outs, man, and all that good stuff. Guys, if you're a new listener, you know, again, it's going to be SoundCloud. Uh, again, we're also available on iTunes, Stitcher.com. Pretty much all the popular apps, Sweet Jesus Radio do- does pop up. But the ones I like to promote the most are SoundCloud and iTunes. Again, it just wasn't because that's, those are very, very popular ones. Uh, and I use Stitcher for podcast. Uh, a big shout out to El Paso Brewing Company for hosting this event. Uh, shout out to my current sponsors, which are Overstreet Productions for your t-shirt, your custom t-shirt printing. My bad, my buddy Larry Overstreet, he's been making shirts for a long time. I've always been satisfied. He's been doing my shirts for over 10 years. So again, hit him up on facebook.com slash Overstreet Productions for more information such as pricing and things like that. And we have Sun City Tattoo Saragoza, the Saragoza location, Sun City Tattoo. My buddy Mike and his team out there also been doing quality work for a while now. Pretty much 90% of my tattoos have been done there. Uh, pay them a visit. I believe the address is 1441 North Saragoza Road, Suite 1D. Uh, pay them a visit, make an appointment, get your next tattoo there. You'll be satisfied, guaranteed. Anybody that wants to promote their business or anything else on Sweet Jesus Radio and all the different pages that I run, uh, just send me a message on Facebook.com. 
uh, slash Sweet Jesus Radio or any of my pages. Or you can email me at sweetjesusradio at gmail.com. And that's pretty much it. Okay, we have the new YouTube page, guys. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to it. We'll have more content there. Right now, we're just doing a lot of highlight clips and things of that nature. So that's pretty much it for this episode. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Sweet Jesus Radio.